Hey everybody, happy new year. And in our first video of 2024, we're gonna figure out how to practice like one of the greatest musicians of all time. So one of the best educational tools that I picked up last year was the practice notebooks of Michael Brecker. A lot of good information in these pages and a glimpse into one of the giants of jazz how he practiced, how his brain worked. And there's just such a multitude of inspiration in that book. But in this video, I want to talk about one particular way that Michael Brecker would practice that I think is going to be beneficial to all of you. Now, some of you may have heard of this before, but I want to break it down into a very simple to follow process and demonstrate it for you so that you can use this fantastic way of practicing in your own time. Okay, so before we dive into the nuts and bolts of this, we, we have to understand something. Michael Brecker took lessons from another fantastic saxophonist and jazz educator named Gary Campbell. And this practice system was actually devised by Gary Campbell. So I want to make that totally clear and I want to give Gary Campbell credit for this. The reason why we're looking at it through the lens of Michael Brecker is that he so famously practiced this way. And if you really study the playing of Michael Brecker, you actually can hear that he practiced this way. So I think I think that uh, Michael was one of the people that sort of took this way of practicing that already existed, that Gary Campbell was teaching to all of his students and sort of made it famous, made it something that a lot of people do now and see tremendous benefits from. So this practice idea has everything to do with orders of keys. You know, we always hear we should practice things in 12 keys, and that is absolutely true. You should always be practicing things through all 12 keys. It's going to provide you with the maximum amount of flexibility the maximum amount of freedom, and ultimately a way to have full command over whatever it is you see when you're soloing. But orders can be tricky because we we all know like the circle of fourths is a great order to practice things in. Maybe you practice things chromatically. Maybe you use the circle of fifths. But the problem comes with if we only use a couple of orders. And I went through this myself years ago for about a 10-year period, no word of a lie. I practiced my major scales every day around the circle of fourths. And then one day I thought to myself, maybe I should try a different order. And I tried to go through the scales chromatically. And it was like, I didn't know my major scales whatsoever. It was the weirdest feeling in the world, especially after practicing them for so long. But what I had found was that my mind had fallen into this big pattern. It only recognized how to play major scales if they were going around the circle of fourths, because that's what I did every day. So at that point, I decided that I needed to switch up the order with which I was practicing things. And this goes along with exactly this sort of Gary Campbell slash Michael Brecker method that I want to show you today. Okay, so let's dive right in. Now, the beauty of this method is that it works with literally anything, a short idea, a long idea. It doesn't really matter. But a great way to begin practicing with this method is using a very short idea. So the idea that we're going to use is a extremely simple pattern. It's a four note pattern in in minor, and if you think about a minor scale, it is simply the scale notes five, three, two, one. That's it. It's as simple as that. Now we're going to discover how cool we can make this sound with just this very, very basic idea. So the first way that Gary Campbell would teach and Michael Brecker would do in the practice room would be to get through all 12 keys in half steps ascending. So what if we played that four note pattern going up in half steps through all 12 keys? Sounds pretty cool. Now, the other thing that he would do is he would also do it descending, but we're going to skip that part just in the interest of not making this video too long. But when you are practicing this stuff on your own, make sure you do it ascending and descending. Okay, so now here is where the magic starts to happen. Now, all we want to do is we want to take that idea of bringing this pattern through a bunch of different keys, but we want to widen the interval. So we just did a chromatic order or minor seconds. So now let's widen that interval by a half step and let's practice the same pattern. We'll take it through the keys, but we'll do it in whole steps. Now, just a note, when you get into something like whole steps, what's going to happen? 
you're going to play through six keys and you're going to run back into the key that you started in. So for many of these orders, you're going to have to do them in sets. We can get through six keys when we're doing whole steps before we run back into the key that we started in. So we have to do two sets of six keys each. I'm going to demonstrate one set of six keys. This is the same pattern moving in whole steps. Now, did you notice something? It almost sounds like a different pattern, and that's just due to the order, especially with a short pattern like this, because the order of keys has so much to do with how it comes across to you, the listener. You starting to see that we're onto something here? Okay, so let's just continue our process. Let's make it the next interval wider. So if you take a major second and we widen that interval by a half step, we get minor thirds. Now, this is perhaps the most famous one because what this connotates is diminished. If we move through four keys a minor third apart from each other, we get the feeling and the sound and the overall connotation of moving it across a diminished chord. Now, of course, you would have to do this in three sets of four keys, and that would cover all 12. Now, when I play this, I have a feeling this is going to sound familiar to you, especially if you're a fan of Michael Brecker's playing or John Coltrane's playing. They relied on this sort of sequencing in the interval of a minor third in a lot of the stuff that they did. And a light bulb may go off in your head when you hear this. Oh, it's just moving an idea around the interval of a minor third. <laughs> Pretty cool, isn't it? And it almost sounds like a completely different pattern, even though we're playing the same thing. All we're changing is the order. Okay, let's move to major thirds. Now, when we do major thirds, we're only going to be able to get through three keys before we run into the key that we started on. So we're going to have to do four sets of three keys each. I personally love the sound of this major third cycle. Check it out. Ooh, I just love that sound. Okay, so for our purposes in this video, we're going to do one more order, and that is the circle of fourths. We're just going to widen it that last one and do perfect fourths. And of course, this is going to take us right around through all 12 keys. <laughs> All right, so there's your circle of fourths. Now, you could do this in tritones, right? You would have to do six sets of two keys each with the tritones. But usually when I do this, I just stop at perfect fourths. You can do whatever you want. But let's think about an interval wider than a tritone. Well, if you think about an interval wider than a tritone, it's just an inversion of one of the orders that we've already done, one of the intervals we've already done. A perfect fifth is just an inverted fourth. A minor six is just an inverted major third. A major six is just an inverted minor third. And then, of course, we get the whole steps and the half steps with the minor seven and the major seven. So really, you only need to run it out to that halfway point in the octave, which is the tritone, and you don't have to keep going. Now, as I mentioned, there's nothing too simple to use this idea with. In fact, the majority of the time, the simpler the idea, the better it's actually going to sound. Because remember, it's, it's all about the orders, not necessarily what you're playing. So let's do one more example. We'll run it through all the different orders. Let's do a, just a humble major triad and check out what it sounds like moving through all these orders. <laughs> Thank you. 
So I hope that this idea, if you've never come across it before, has inspired maybe a new way for you to practice through the keys, a really flexible way, a really interesting way that's going to keep you having fun and always hearing new things. And I hope that if you've heard this idea before, but you've never known like sort of the moving parts of it, that this could clarify that a little bit for you. So let me know if you have any questions in the comments section below. Look forward to having a discussion down there. I try to get back to as many comments as I possibly possibly can. Hope you're all having a great 2024 so far, practicing regularly, taking action, working on the simple things like this. And most of all, thanks for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. It means the world to me. We will see you soon with another video. Bye, everyone.